Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Thanks Doc, but what the f*** is that? Um, this episode's going to be about Aquagenic Uticaria and I have a lovely lady called Hayley that I connected with through Chronically Fit Group who has sent over her account um, of life with Aquagenic Uticaria and I would love to tell you as much information as I found out online. I did try and do some research but there just wasn't much around about it so I found a few support groups, um, I found a few articles but there wasn't really a lot of information around the science behind it or any first-hand accounts of life with it that I could find and have readily available which is exactly why I'm making these videos because someone that gets diagnosed with this tomorrow um, my resource will be out there for them to find. So without further ado I'm going to let Hayley take over and tell you all about Aquagenic UT Carrier. Hello everyone, my name is Hayley. I'm a first year physician assistant student in Miami, Florida in the United States. I have a condition called Aquagenic Uticaria. I also have Cholinergic Uticaria. For me specifically, I break out in hives from the waist up and from my forearms up. So this part of my arms to my fingertips and from my pelvic line down, I do not break out in hives. Now this happens any time that I'm exposed to water on my skin, whether that be ocean water, rain water, pool water, it doesn't matter. It's very exhausting to break out in hives every day because it's an allergic reaction. I'm having an allergic reaction every single day. The hives can last anywhere from 20 minutes after being exposed to water to an hour and a half. They're very, very itchy. That's basically the biggest thing. They're inconvenient. I also break out in hives when I'm exposed to my own sweat and when I cry. So I try not to cry because I'm crying because I'm upset, but then I get upset because my face is itchy. So. Every day I take a shower, I break out in hives. So something that I do to minimize this is I take shorter showers. I've noticed that it doesn't matter the temperature of the water. The one that affects me the most is actually um, rainwater. So rainwater, I try to avoid as much as I can. Um, and I actually have a tattoo of an umbrella. I always forget my umbrella. You would think that I would remember it, but I don't. So I deal with aquagenic and cholinergic uticaria by basically avoiding things that bring on my symptoms. So shorter showers, always carrying an umbrella, trying not to overheat. Um, I have a little fan for my phone that you plug in at the bottom. Sometimes that helps. I park closer when I go out for walks and it's really hot outside. Simple basic things like that. There's not too much that I can do to avoid it. Antihistamines in my case did help with sweating, so it allows me to sweat and not break out in hives, but I've had no luck yet with the water. So there's a scientist out there that can help fix this. I would totally appreciate you. The way that I explain it to my peers is basically, you know, I tell them I'm allergic to water on my skin. And the reason why I say that is because this condition comes in various forms and severities. There are individuals who are allergic to water internally and basically all of their body fluids. I'm very thankful that mine is not as severe. I have been suffering from this since I was about 14 years old, so I wasn't born with it. And I didn't know what it was until I was about 19. I found a research article on it. And at that point in time, they had said something around the likes of one in every 230 million people have this condition. And as I've gotten older, I'm 23 now, I've noticed more people coming out and saying that when they're exposed to water, you know, it affects them in X, Y, and Z ways and they get hives. So I do think it's um, not as rare as people think it is. I do think that the more severe forms are definitely rarer. Um, but I think that it's important to talk about as weird as it is because you might come across people who are allergic to water and we don't know why.
My advice to anyone dealing with aquagenic urticaria is to be very patient with yourself and also be prepared. It's taught me how to be resourceful. I do forget my umbrella a lot and it rains where I'm from rather frequently, especially in the summer. So I've turned like umbrella bags into ponchos and, you know, things like that. Um, but it's just very inconvenient because water is a part of our daily life. And there's a lot of activities that I don't partake in now because of my allergy. So I used to love to swim. I used to love going to the beach. And I still can get into the water, thankfully, up to my waist. Because in my case, I don't break out, you know, below the waist. But it's it just sucks sometimes. You know, I live in Miami, Florida. I want to be outside. I want to be doing things. I want to be partaking in outdoor activities that I used to. I used to be a competitive cheerleader and those aren't really things that I do now because they exhaust me. <laughs> um, so biggest advice, reach out to people. There are a lot of people on social media who are open about their condition and um, seek community. Seek community, talk to people who know what you're going through, go to the doctor. Maybe they can find an underlying condition or something of the sort that can help you manage it a bit better, take the edge off of the symptoms. The itchiness is definitely the worst part for me.